So now that you have all of your inputs configured, you've got the interface set up the way that you like, you're ready to start creating some events for playback. Now the events will be displayed here in the clip list and you'll have a camera angle for each input that you're recording. Now, you do have the ability to adjust this interface. Let's say you're only using two cameras for instant replay. Well, you can turn off cameras three and four by using these buttons underneath the B output window. You can see the clip list now is only showing the two camera angles that you have highlighted. We'll go ahead and turn three and four back on. So this gives you the ability to adjust the interface to match your production needs. Now, you also have the ability to organize the clip list using its banks and pages. Now, the banks and pages are located here in a pop-up window right underneath your four preview monitors. And you've got four banks, and you have four pages for each bank. Now, you can access the banks and pages using the mouse and using the pop-up menu right here, or it can also be done from the control surface. On the control surface, Using the P1 through P4 keys will allow you to change between the pages for the currently selected bank. Now, if you want to change to a different bank, hold down the Alt key. Now, P1 through P4 will take you to the four different banks that are available. So, for instance, if you wanted to get to Bank 3, Page 2, you would hold down Alt and hit P3 to get to Bank number 3, and then let go of Alt and hit P2 to get to page two of that selected bank. Let's go ahead back to page one, bank one, for the rest of the presentation. Now there are four ways that you can create an event for playback. The basic idea behind any replay system is to mark it, cue it, and play it. And any of these four workflows I'm about to show you fulfill those requirements. Let's start out with the most traditional way, that's mark in and mark out. Now, before you mark an event, you want to start the record process. And this can be done either by hitting the record button with the mouse here on the interface, or by hitting the record button here on the control surface. You'll notice that it turns red once you've started the recording process. Now, once you've started the recording process, you're going to be recording all of the channels coming into the three play. You're not going to miss any of the action. Even if you don't hit an in or an out point, all four of the inputs are being recorded all the time until you stop that record process. You even have the ability to go back later and mark in and out points and create new events that weren't created while the live event was happening. So to create our first event, we're going to use the mark in, mark out method. Your in and out buttons are here on the control surface. And again, we want to watch the action and know what it is we're going to be recording. So on the control surface, I'm going to hit output A, so we know we're working with A, and I'm going to hit the live button to put us into the live mode, and we're now seeing the live video coming in on input A. Again, you can use the P1 through P4 buttons to look at the four different camera angles that you have available to you, and you can choose one as the angle that you want to create your event from. Now, once the event's going to start, you can hit the in button. And you can continue to hit the in button over and over again until the actual in point happens. We'll let the play go ahead and run its course. Got a nice long run here. And we're going to let it run just a little bit out past the end of the action. And then we'll hit our out point. Now, as soon as we hit the out point, that event is available here on the clip list. So to get to that event, simply hit the clip list button on the control surface. The clip list will highlight, and the event that you are watching, the camera angle that you are watching when you mark the event, becomes the selected camera angle. Now, if you want to use that as the camera angle, you're ready to go. If you want to select a different camera angle before playback, you can do that either by clicking on it with the mouse or by using the control surface. Hold down the Alt key and use the Next Clip button, and that'll take us over take us over, take us over, and the previous clip button will take us back. And these are the four camera angles that we have available for playback. So you select the camera angle that you want for your playback. You're ready to start. Go ahead and hit the play button. Now once it's playing, you can use the T-bar and you can dynamically control the speed of the playback. We can go ahead and slow this down. As he's evading the tackles, we can speed it back up a little bit. And then when they get ready to tackle him, we're going to slow it down a little bit more. And we're going to have it slow-mo during the tackle. 
and then we can ramp right back up to full speed again. Once we're done with our replay, you hit the live button and you're back watching the live game again, ready to create your next event. Now you do have the ability to jump from camera angle to camera angle during the playback, and this can be done a couple of different ways. Let's go back to the clip list, and I'm going to hit the stop button twice, and that's going to reset that currently selected clip and camera angle back to its start point. Now, we're going to go ahead and start playback, and I'm just going to slow it down to give us a little bit of extra time. And to jump to a new camera angle, I'm going to hold down the Alt button, and I'm going to use the Next Clip button. And it jumps to the next camera angle, jump to the next camera angle, jumps to the next camera angle, and then the previous clip button will bring me back through the different camera angles that you have available. So that's one way to jump from camera angle to camera angle. I'm going to go ahead and hit Stop twice and restart that clip. You could also grab the mouse and you could jump all the way over to camera angle 3 or directly to camera angle 4 and then all the way back to camera angle 1, not having to cycle through all of the camera angles to get to the one that you're looking for. Now, another way to create an event is to just mark an out point without marking an in point. Now, this is a great technique to use if something has already happened and you didn't mark an in point. This allows you to jump backwards in time and create an in point after the action has started. So again, we're going to go to the control surface and we're going to hit the live button to get back into live mode. And we can preview the four cameras on output A that we have available to us here and we can choose the angle that we want to use to create our event. Now, how far back in time is it going to jump when you hit the Mark Out button can be determined by going to the little gear underneath the B output window, and you have one button marking, and there's a pop-up allowing you to select an amount of time. And this is the amount of time that the three-play system is going to jump back when you hit Mark Out without hitting a Mark In. I'm going to go ahead and set that to five seconds. Now, we'll go ahead and wait for our play to start. And I'm not going to hit the in button. I'm just going to let the play start. And I'm ready to hit my out button once the action starts. So here goes the play. It's started. And now after it started, oh, I missed it. Let's hit mark out. Now, as soon as I hit mark out, an event happened down here in the clip list. And it literally jumped back five seconds in time, and it marked an in point. Now, this is going to create a clip that's five seconds long, and that's not very long. It may work for some sports, but you may want to have more time to be able to deal with. And one way of gaining more time on a clip like this is to set an out point pad. The out point pad is set, go to that same gear where we set up our time for our one button marking, and just below it, you have out point padding. And we can go ahead and set that to 10 seconds. And what that means is, it's now going to add an additional 10 seconds to the out point. So it'll give us a clip that's 15 seconds long. This should be enough for most sports, but you do have the ability to go back and change that out point, make the clip even longer if that should be necessary. So now that we've got our clip, we can go ahead and go to the clip list mode. The clip is ready for playback. We can hit play, and we'll take it back up to 100%. And we'll see that we got the action that we needed without hitting an endpoint. And the play is still going on. It's on a different camera angle. But we did have enough time to see the entire play before the clip stopped. Now, if you didn't have enough time and you wanted to make that play a little bit longer before you went to playback, there's two ways you can adjust the out point. You can either grab the mouse, you can left click, and you can drag on the out point. And you can see on the out point right here that you're adjusting the out point on output A. We can get all the way to the end of the play. And now we know that we've got the entire play. Now, another way to do the adjustment of the out point is to do it from the control surface. So you hold down the Alt button, and we'll use the previous clip button. We're already on the very first camera angle, but you can keep going. And you can get to the duration, the out point, the in point, and the event number. So we're going to go ahead to the out point. Once you're settled on the out point, you want to hold down the edit key on the control surface. Now you can use the jog shuttle wheel to go ahead and find the out point of the play. See exactly where you wanted it to be. Once you have your out point set up, you now go ahead and hold down Alt, get back to your camera angle, and you're ready to play back that event. 
Now, a third way to create an event is to mark an endpoint with no outpoint. And this can be very useful in that if you just mark an endpoint and then we go to that event, there is no outpoint. So it won't stop playing. And this will allow you to keep the action rolling for as long as the director might want that action to go. And then once you're done with the replay, you can go ahead and hit the outpoint to actually create the event. Let's take a look at that. We're going to go back to our control surface. And we're going to go back to the live mode. We're going to watch the game. And before our event starts, I'm going to hit the in button. And again, I can hit the in button a few times until the action starts. And I've not hit an out button. Yet, I'm going to hit clip list. And I'm ready to play that event back. Now, we can go ahead and start playing that event back. And there is no out point. So that event will continue to play until we manually stop it. So hey, we want to see that little tussle at the end. We want to see the celebration. That's great. Now we're ready to come out. And we manually stop it. And the director can go back to live video on the switcher. Now this did not create a full event. This only created an endpoint. So what you can do is we can go back to the clip list here. And I'm going to start that event over. And we can play it through. And once we get to the point of the event where we actually want our out point, you can now go ahead and mark the out point after the fact. And this will complete this event and set you up to start creating the next one. Now the fourth way to create a playback is to use the delayed playback mode inside of the three play. Now this can be done without marking an in or an out button. We're going to go back to live mode. And we're going to go ahead and wait for the play to start. And as soon as the action starts, you can grab the jog wheel, and you can turn it a quarter turn, and it will freeze. And we can now go ahead and queue up exactly where we want the play to begin, and we're ready for playback. As soon as the director would call for an instant replay, replay is ready. You hit the play button. The play starts. Now, one of the interesting things about playing back in this mode is you can switch camera angles by using the P3 and P4 buttons while you're live. Once you're done, you can hit stop, go back to live, and you're ready to go again. But you have not created an event. You've only delayed the playback and then replayed that video without ever creating an event. You could go back after the fact. As I showed you before, you could rewind, create an endpoint, then go forward and create an out point to create an event after the fact. But delayed playback mode doesn't create an event when you're using it in the fashion that I just showed.